In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some of you may be standing in the back. There's seats here in the front. If you need a suntan, there's a nice area right here. You can sit in, get your color for the day, your vitamin D. I'm going to give you vitamin G today, God willing, a little vitamin of God. And it's interesting because <clears throat> today's gospel, which I'm not going to get into right away, but I want to talk to you about a topic that God speaks a lot about in the Bible. And this is the topic of kindness. Kindness. Everything we have, my beloved brothers and sisters, the fact that we woke up, the fact that we're here, the fact that we have each other, the fact that we have a beautiful church we can worship in peace, the fact that we have the beauty of the fellowship is all due to God's kindness to us. In today's world where there's so much meanness, so, much, so many people that are rude, how many of you have ever experienced road rage? People in a rage, going where? To the next red light. People's profanity. Take a walk anywhere and all you hear is profanity. I remember a woman recounted the story to me. She was in Manhattan, and for those who know the Upper East Side a little bit, there's a place called Zittimer's on 76th and Madison. And this woman walked into the shop, and she asked for something, and the woman behind the counter gave it to her, and she said, thank you so much. And she handed her the money. The woman started crying. And the woman says, why are you crying? She said, the previous customer was so upset with me because I didn't have something she wanted that she threw the scissors that she was holding at me. And I can't believe you handed me the money. A world that's so polarized. You have to be either a Democrat or a Republican. You have to either be this way or that way. You have to believe these things or the other things. What has happened to kindness? And the Bible tells us about kindness. It says, St. Paul says, never pay back anyone wrong that someone does to you with another wrong. It doesn't say most of the time don't do that. It doesn't say half the time don't do that. It says never, ever repay one wrong with another. But instead, St. Paul says, try to be kind. And isn't it true, my friends, that we put far more effort into looking good, into looking nice, than being nice? You know, we... We get in front of the mirror. I do it too on Sunday mornings at least more. Make sure my hair isn't sticking up. You know, make sure I comb it down. We sit in front of the mirror to make sure our appearance is good, is nice. How much do we stand in front of God and make sure that our attitude is nice? Our behavior is nice before God. If we want to be, and I'm going to tell you a secret I don't think anyone told you, and it's free. I'm not charging for this advice. If we want to be more beautiful people, and if we want to be more handsome men, and you want to be more elegant of a woman, here's the secret. To look really nice for someone, you have to be nice. People love being around people who are nice. Everything about a nice person is more beautiful, is more attractive, is more lovable, is more embracing, right? You go across somebody who's not at all kind and nice, 
you can't stand five minutes in their presence. Someone who's abrasive and a know-it-all and in-your-face kind of person. And listen to what the Bible says again about being dressed not to impress people, but being dressed to impress God. And St. Paul again comes to us with five things. He said, when you want to get dressed in front of God and say, hey, God, look at how I look. Tell me how I'm doing. He says, you put these five things on. He says, as God's chosen people, all of us here today, as God's chosen people, put on and clothe yourselves with compassion. You want to look handsome to God? Put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That's the dress that God looks at to see how handsome and beautiful and wonderful we are. <clears throat> so we want to dress in this community to impress only God. And I wonder sometimes if I were to walk into your jobs, you know, or into your neighborhoods and ask some of the people you know, what's the one quality you could say about Father Pandeleimon? What might you think they would answer? God wants you to be known for your kindness. He wants you to have a reputation of kindness. What would they highlight about us? I don't know. But he wants us to be famous for our kindness. And <clears throat> imagine, friends, as we are a church here at Holy Resurrection, imagine if people in Brookville, in Glen Cove, in Manhasset said, think about it. That church in Brookville is one of the kindest churches I've ever walked into. That church in Brookville knows how to be kind. How beautiful of a reputation to have as a community, because we all can pitch in for that. And I was debating whether to bring this up, so please forgive me. I don't mean to be generalizing, because when you generalize, they say generally you're wrong. But you know, like for us men in the room, our first date kindness, when you went on that first date, how kind you were, right? I was thinking about this. You could listen to your significant other for two hours. Yeah, tell me more. <laughs> Keep going, yeah. You didn't get tired one minute, two hours sitting there talking to the love of your life, googly-eyed, not tired, right? You, you opened doors. You were opening doors for them. You know, you were pushing in chairs. You, you would eat anything in front of them, even if they gave you the worst meal. You were always smiling. <clears throat> you were willing to drive hours away. First date kindness. How come we've lost that with our spouses? Do we open the door to our spouses anymore? Do we push in chairs for them anymore? I see, don't look at them. You don't want to put them on the spot. <laughs> you follow me. You know what kindness is? Kindness is love in action. That's what kindness is. You may, it's not a feeling. You can't say, I feel a little kindness towards that person. It doesn't work like that. Your kindness is in love, in action. And this is what the story of today's gospel is. It's not what you do, feel kindness, it's what you do. You remember today's gospel? Anyone know what the gospel is called today? It's a very famous, everyone knows today's gospel. Obviously, not everyone knows it. What's today's gospel called? The Good Samaritan. This is the story of the Good Samaritan. Now again, and I apologize, and again, I don't mean to be out of bounds, but I'm just reading the gospel here that it says a lawyer, a lawyer stood up and put Jesus to the test saying, 
Master, teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And the Lord says to him, how do you read? What do you read in the God? Oh, he says, it says you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, bravo. This guy's got it. Perfect answer. But then the next sentence says, and he, desiring to justify himself, said, and who is my neighbor? Now here, as a good lawyer would tell you, is a loophole. He's looking for a loophole. Because more than likely, he could not imagine that God said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right? That's a little bit of a stretch. He didn't really want to love everyone. He wanted to love those who were a lot like him, who were his friends, the ones that are easy to love. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus says, you have to love your neighbor as yourself. That's a lot more difficult to do, brothers and sisters. So, in order to understand then the context of the parable, he says that this man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. You can walk this road today. It's very windy. You can imagine 2,000 years ago, there were thieves, robbers, people there, and especially at night if you were traveling. And this poor fellow falls among these thieves. They beat him half dead. And then the Lord says a priest walks by, and when he sees him at a distance, he walks across the street. Doesn't want to deal with him. And then he says a Levite, a Levite walks by, and he, it's even worse, he walks up and looks at the man and crosses onto the opposite side of the road. And then it says a Samaritan. A Samaritan with a Jew was like water and oil, like fire and water, like, like a black man saving a Ku Klux Klan bigot saving his life. It was in, impossible for a Samaritan to help a Jew at that time. There was even a saying, better to be a dog than a Samaritan at that time. So in order to get into the story and how politically incorrect this story is, presenting these two people, you have to understand it in that context. Because Jesus Christ is not about being politically correct, by the way. Christ is about being correct, period. Not politically or otherwise. And so, in this context, we have encountering three individuals. And I'll quickly share with them a few things. Am I tiring you? How much time do I have? Woo! We have time. So we have three people in the story. We have a priest, and this person represents, friends, those who keep at a distance. I can keep my distance. I can pass by on the other side of the street of life. If I avoid the people, I don't have to deal with them. I don't have to worry about them. I'll just keep my distance. I know John Doe is suffering, but it's okay. Let him suffer. I'll just stay over here on my side of the street. Don't get too close to people, because then you might have to actually work and help them. You have the Levite, curious, he goes over and looks, but he's indifferent. He goes on the opposite side of the road. Somebody once said, a little kid, Father, what's a Levite? Do they sell jeans? I said, no, no, not Levite jeans. Now look at this. Those two individuals, the priest and the Levite, are people of the church. They are on the religious elite. They know the rules. And some people might think that if I go to church every Sunday, I'm a really kind person. I'm a good Christian. I'm in, I'm in church every Sunday. I'm a great person. We see in the story being religious does not make you kind. 
Some of the most unkind people go to church every Sunday, and please don't look at them. Some of the most unkind people come to church every Sunday. To be kind means to be like Christ. And then you have the Samaritan who shows kindness, how do we say, in action. First, it's a beautiful phrase. It says he saw him. Theoreo. He sees. How do we love? Through our eyes. That's how you show love in action, is through your eyes. Because you see someone and you feel pity and compassion. And what Greg said today in the sermon with the children, how can you heal someone? How can you have a superpower? called listening. When you hear the pain of people, you begin to heal them. Right? And the question is, we want to see the needs of the people around us, but unfortunately, people hide their wounds, friends. All of us in this church today, and this is what I'll close with, every single person in this church today has a wound, even if they're five years old. All of us have something in our past that created a hit, a hurt, something that's hurt us. People hide them, and we don't see them because the number one killer of kindness in this world is hurry. I'm in a rush. I don't have time to deal with you. That's the number one killer of kindness. So the message I want you to leave today with is slow down. Slow down, be a person of kindness, dress yourself with compassion, gentleness, patience. These are what makes us, these are the items that make us handsome before God. And when you encounter the people who are irritated and upset, and people who are really prickly and really annoying, don't say what's wrong with that person. Don't ask that question. What's wrong with this person? What's the matter with him? The better question and the kinder question is to ask, what happened to him? For that person to be that way, there's a history there. The Christ question is, what happened to that person? And they're so upset, so angry, so sharp so irritable, so abrasive, so in your face. What happened? I hope that God gives us this kind of eyes as the Samaritan to, to go way above the cultural, political correctness, if you will, to have those eyes and the compassionate heart and to put love into action, which is the definition of kindness. If we can do that, then just like Greg said, we do become the eyes of Christ, and the ears of Christ, and the hands of Christ. May God bless all of us, and may God bless especially our younger children who are here. Let us pray to the Lord.